Hello and welcome to video 8 of the trigonometry video series. This time we're going to have a look at uh, a whole bunch of bearings problems, a few key examples that will help us uh, know how to solve these problems involving bearings. Okay, this is our first example. Hayden walks on a bearing of 210 degrees for 12.6 kilometers from point X to point Y. And the question asks how far south is Hayden from his starting point. Step one is to draw a great diagram and we better start with a set of compass lines here. And we'll look to uh, draw a careful diagram and then uh, create a right angle triangle from which we can then use our normal steps to solve trigonometry problems. So we want to uh, indicate or at least draw on our diagram a bearing of 210 degrees. Now bearings, as you know from the previous uh, video, uh, go from north all the time and always go clockwise. So we'll look to go around 210 degrees from north. Now this red line has gone around a quarter of our revolution, which is 90 degrees. And if we have to keep going, we should keep going there. So uh, with another quarter done, we have, we've traveled 180 degrees. And comparing that to 210 degrees, we'll need another 30 degrees to create a, uh, a bearing of 210 degrees. So that's a, that blue line indicates a bearing of 210 degrees. And he's gone from X to Y. So we'll pop that on our diagram. And he's also, the other bit of information we get from the question is that he's gone, uh, he's traveled a distance of 12.6 kilometers. So we'll put that on our uh, diagram there on the blue line. Now we'll also create where we can a right angle triangle to use because we can use sine cos and tan ratios from right uh, if we've got a right angle triangle we're dealing with. So this uh, dotted red line has created a right angle triangle with the vertical axis there and so we'll put a 90 degree sign in the corner. We could have uh, drawn a dotted line up from Y to uh, to the east-west axis as well to create a different type of uh, right angle triangle there. But um, seeing we know that that 30 degrees is one of our angles here, it's uh, convenient for us to create a right angle triangle with that uh, vertical axis there. So once we've got a right angle triangle we can use all our normal sine, cos or tan rules and we can even use Pythagoras, Pythagoras rule if we wanted to. Now we've got to find out how far, far south he's gone. Now on the blue line, that he's got a combination of south and west from his starting point. And the sides of the right angle triangle break it up for us into two different components. The vertical side is how far south he's gone, and the horizontal side of the right angle triangle is how far west he's gone in this case. So it's pretty convenient for us to find out the different sections of his journey really. So we want to find out the length of that side there, and that'll tell us how far south he's gone from his starting point. So we'll put a D for distance there. It'd be great for us to find out that distance. That'll answer our question nicely. So now we've got a right angle triangle with all the information on there, and we'll just go through our steps of uh, finding a missing side uh, using sine, cos, or tan ratios. Step one is to label the sides hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. And then we'll, from that, decide whether we're going to use sine, cos, or tan as the basis of our solution here. This triangle involves the adjacent and the hypotenuse side. The D is on the adjacent side and the 12.6 uh, is on our hypotenuse. So um, involving those two sides, we'll look to use uh, one of the ratios that involves the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And you can see that the cosine ratio involves the adjacent and hypotenuse. So we'll base our solution on the cosine ratio. We'll write that up the top there and we'll fill in uh, that cosine arrangement with all the numbers from our question. Cos theta, theta is an angle uh, symbol, so we'll put the 30 degrees there, so we'll make it cos 30. In the adjacent position we said we had the D, so we'll put that on the top. And in the hypotenuse position we had the length 12.6, so we've filled in that uh, cosine ratio there. We've written a trig equation there from the, the details in the question. 
Now we've got to get the letter on its own. Now to get the letter on its own in this case we need to get rid of a 12.6 that is dividing and uh, to nullify a 12.6 that's dividing we'll need to multiply both sides by 12.6 and on that right hand side those two will cancel out. A dividing 12.6 and a multiplying 12.6 will cancel each other out and that leaves D on its own on the right hand side so we'll just write D on its own and we'll put the left hand side, switch it to the right there, 12.6 times cos 30 we had on that left hand side. We'll type that into our calculator and we'll get that D distance of 10.91 kilometers. If we rounded it off to two decimal places we can choose how we round that off. Now that indicates how far south Hayden is from his starting point. Because we're asked the question in a sentence form We'll just answer that in sentence form. So Hayden is now 10.91 kilometres south from his starting point. OK. So we found how far south he is by finding the vertical side of that triangle we created. Now we use, a, use the same journey for Hayden here and we'll, um, we'll find a slightly different solution because the question asks now for part B here on the same journey how far west is Hayden from his starting point? Now we saw last time that how far south he is from his starting point was given to us by the vertical side of that triangle. This time, that side down there, the horizontal side of our right angle triangle we created, represents how far west he's gone from his starting point. That's the west component of his journey. So we'll put our D down there this time, and we'll see in this uh, solution that all it does is, uh, it won't change any of the numbers, but it'll change the arrangement of sides that we're using and uh, and the trig different, we'll use a different trigonometry ratio in this case. We used cos last time. Let's see what we've got to use this time. Let's label the sides, hypotenuse, opposite and adjacent, and you can see this time that because the D's in a different spot, this triangle now involves the opposite and the hypotenuse arrangement. Looking at our sine cos or tan, it's the sine ratio that involves opposite and hypotenuse. So we'll base the rest of our solution this time instead of cos uh, with the sine ratio as the basis. We'll fill in theta, opposite and hypotenuse from our question. We've got theta was 30, opposite was the D this time, and the hypotenuse was our 12.6. We'll get uh, the letter on its own by a very similar way of <laughs> from last time, multiply both sides by 12.6. And we'll get D equals this time 12.6 times sine 30. So that's just pretty typical uh, ways of solving trigonometry uh, ratios here. So D on the calculator this time will be 6.30 kilometres and let's answer it in a sentence form. Hayden is now 6.30 kilometres west from his starting point. So uh, we can see there from those first two uh, examples that it might have a journey um, going from X down to Y there but uh, the two sides of the right angle triangle we created give us two different components of that journey, a south sort of component and a west component in these cases. Now once again we're going to still use Hayden's uh, journey here. We've got the bearing diagram nicely drawn etc. This time they're asking for something a bit tricky. They're trying to find from point Y they want a bearing back to point X. They, it's almost like they're asking if Hayden was to return from where he's gone to point Y, um, if he was to return back to his starting point at point X, what direction would he have to walk in? Okay, a bit tricky. Let's have a look at the diagram here and we'll use that for the basis of our answer. So, <clears throat> it's a good uh, good habit to get into. Anytime there's uh, someone on a journey from the starting point to a finishing point and, and when we have to figure out a bearing back again it's best to draw a separate set of compass lines on the uh, the point, uh, any any point where someone stops on a journey. It's a, it's a good habit to get into and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, now we had 30 degrees from our bearing before, that was what was left over after we went 90 and then 90 and we had to go another 30 to create a bearing of 210 degrees. Now, um, if you concentrate on the vertical line here and a vertical line over here, you can see that they'd be parallel, they're both north-south lines, so they've got to be um, parallel to each other. And the blue line, which represents Hayden's journey, is like a transversal. 
Um, and so we're going to use alternate angles in parallel lines to move that 30 degrees across to uh, to here. So let's see how that works. So that uh, angle over here is 30 degrees as well and I'll just uh, illustrate that by our blue lines here. I'll just make those a bit bolder. Can you see we've got a pair of parallel lines and a transversal there? So that creates the opportunity to move that 30 across because alternate angles are equal in parallel lines. So it's a bit hard to spot, but it's easier to spot if you uh, make the parallel lines that you're suspecting uh, nice and big and thick, and you can even extend the transversal, and you can you can spot those rules that we can bring in. We can bring in those rules of parallel lines um, a bit more readily there, particularly if we can see that they apply. Okay, so <coughs> because uh, that 30 degrees got transferred over to that other intersection, really, we can then concentrate on just that bearing of x from y. So we'll put ourselves, uh, we'll imagine ourselves standing on that y point, uh, looking north. How far around would we have to uh, swivel to uh, to be pointing across to where the x is? Now, bearings go from north and they are counted or measured clockwise. So can you see that 30 degrees represents the bearing of um, x from y? So we've almost we've pretty much answered the question already here. The, from point Y, the bearing of point X is 30 degrees. Now bearings, uh, don't forget, uh, have to be uh, have to be formatted in a three-figure type format. So 0, 3, 0 is uh, is kind of like the bearing there. So that was pretty strange. Uh, the steps there were we we did a separate set of compass lines on point Y, and then we looked for uh, an, an opportunity to apply parallel lines and a transversal so we could kick some of those rules in from parallel lines and a transversal we kicked in the rule for alternate angles there and that allowed us to transfer angles from our original uh, information over to um, our Y point so that we could get the bearing of X from point Y bit tricky but still okay here's our last example here from Bankstown, Alana flies 30 kilometers west and 20 kilometers south to Camden. And we need to find the bearing of Camden from Bankstown. Now, uh, previously we've been given um, a bearing and we had to find some distances from that. So here we've been given some distances and we have to find an angle from it. So it'll be finding an angle, this one. Okay, let's put our information on. That's B for Bankstown. That's where we're going from. Alana flies 30 kilometers west and 20 kilometers south and they become the sides of the right angle triangle we're going to create we'll put Camden, a C for Camden down there, B for, B for Bankstown where we started from we went 30 kilometers west 20 kilometers south to Camden and we want to find uh, out the bearing of Camden from Bankstown so we're going to create our right angle triangle by putting the hypotenuse in this time and go from there now we've got a theta there. That angle there is going to be the handy one for us to find out because that'll tell us we want to in the end find a bearing that goes from north, 90 degree, sorry, north clockwise around. We want to know what that angle is there. Otherwise we'd be finding it pretty tough to find a bearing uh, along that dotted red line there. So anyway, it's a right angle triangle because we went west and then south. So that's 90 degrees apart from each other there. So we can confidently put that 90 degrees symbol in there. And we're going to find theta here. So we've got a triangle here with two sides and uh, we need to find the angle. So we'll label the hypotenuse, the opposite and the adjacent in the normal ways. We'll figure out whether we use uh, sine, cos or tan here. Our distances are in the opposite position and the adjacent position. So they're the two sides we're using. Opposite and adjacent, that's a tan ratio we'll use because that's uh, involving both opposite and adjacent. So we'll base our solution on tan, the tan ratio. Let's fill in the uh, details from the question now. Tan theta, we don't know the theta yet, so we can't put anything on the left-hand side except uh, keeping it as tan theta. But we do know the opposite and the adjacent. They're both numbers in this case. The opposite is the 20, and the adjacent position is the 30 kilometers there. Now, can you remember what you've got to press in a special way to find an angle? We've got to press shift tan. Then um, we'll put our ratio in, 20 over 30, using our fraction button. Then we'll press equals, 
and then we've got to press our degrees, minutes and seconds button uh, because we'll we'll round it off to the nearest angle on this one. Okay, so when we do that carefully we'll get a reading of 33 degrees, 41 minutes, 24 seconds. And if we round it off to the nearest um, degree here, we have to remember to check the next bit out. Whenever we're rounding off we, we, we check the next section and see if it's more than halfway. Now 41 out of 60, these are out of 60, these are minutes and seconds sections now, so halfway is 30. We will add one to that degree because 41 out of 60 is more than halfway. 41 is more than 30. 30 would represent halfway there. So we'll round that up a little and get 34 degrees. Now all we've found so far is theta. We haven't found the proper bearing. Remember bearings go from north. So we can't leave the question there. We have to think about the bearings now. Now because the bearing goes from north all the way around there, can you see that we've got a 90 degrees and another 90 degrees and the angle that's in this uh, left hand quadrant, left hand bottom quadrant here, that's not the theta. So uh, a short way of doing that is if we went all the way around three quadrants we would get to 270 degrees. That west line there is 270 degrees as a bearing. And if we took away that theta, which we found to be 34 degrees, if we took away that theta from 270, we'd just get that red uh, arrow, which is the bearing sort of uh, dimension there. So the bearing in this case is going to be 270 degrees minus whatever we found to be for theta, which was 34 degrees. So a bit tricky there, but the bearing we found of Camden from Bankstown is 236 degrees, which was 270 minus that theta that we found from our triangle we created. Okay, so um, drawing a diagram carefully uh, using bearing, uh, bearing indications and either finding a side that uh, is created, a missing side that's created or a missing uh, angle that's created from our right angle triangles. We've gone from bearings to right angle triangles because uh, we know how to use right angle triangles with sine, cos and tan, or we should. Okay, so let's just summarize here. Solving bearing problems. It involves being really careful with our diagrams. When It involves drawing uh, compass lines, or they sometimes call that a compass rose and uh, drawing our bearings from that. We look to construct a right angle triangle either up to the horizontal one or maybe across to the vertical one because once we use, uh, once we construct right angle triangles we can use sine, cos and tan and even Pythagoras. And then once we've done that we can use our normal steps for finding sides or angles using trigonometry um, processes and if you've forgotten some of those uh, there's some pr previous videos in this trigonometry series to remind you of that. Now another step, just um, on those, there's, there's particularly difficult questions that involve bearings back to the starting point. When you do that, it's best to um, create another set of uh, compass lines, um, I guess at the end of your journey. So you can imagine someone going from this point down to this point here. And so we'll put another set of compass lines there because that allows us then to th see things such as uh, alternates, correspondings and co-interiors and that, that allows us to move an angle from one set of compass lines to another allowing us to find the final answer there to find some other bearings so once we've once we can spot that we have parallel lines and a transversal in our diagram we're allowed to use any of those three rules that come with parallel lines and a transversal that alternate angles are equal in parallel lines corresponding angles are equal in parallel lines and you'll remember that co-interior angles are supplementary in parallel lines, they add up to 180 degrees. So we will be able to use that if we draw our lines uh, nice and big to, uh, to be able to use those rules. Okay, that's uh, pretty tricky. We, we went through some good examples there and uh, I'm hoping that's going to help you to be more able to solve bearings problems. So get plenty of practice and watch the video over if you need to. And don't forget there's a great website, uh, peterblakemaths.com, for some more videos on a whole range of topics. Catch you next time. Thanks for listening. Bye.